So not every country in the world is a member of Interpol, but most are. And by this outreach that we have through our General Secretariat here and our I-24-7 database, uh, it was as quoted in our recent conference in Lyon, the network of networks. Uh, that sums it up perfectly for me. We have this vast network that we share across our network and that enables us to reach out to law enforcement, the wider law enforcement family, so not just police but customs, border agencies, security agencies as well, to, uh, with a common cause and the common cause uh, for my part of the world is very much about global nuclear security and the techniques and methods and uh, operations that we can run to support the uh, counter uh, nuclear smuggling activity and to ensure uh, global nuclear security. We have about 120 of the 190 member countries are here at the moment uh, and agencies we have uh, about uh, 20 different agencies represented as well. Uh, the, uh, there's a common theme for the agencies, they're all involved in one form or another with counter nuclear trafficking either through their role as law enforcement agencies and officers or through their uh, forensic expertise or through the, uh, the, the equipment with the uh, US Department of Energy for example with their detection uh, capabilities. Uh, but we also have experts in the field of uh, uh, police military liaison and uh, covert surveillance, uh, the whole raft of uh, law enforcement activities you would expect to be bringing to a conference like this if you're going to be promoting the importance of countering the new activities of nuclear traffickers. We also have had the benefit of uh, a number of case studies uh, from a, a few countries that have suffered uh, a, a lot of, and I mean a lot, of uh, incidents of trafficking of nuclear and other radioactive material over the last decade.